Samira has been respect banned off of the board. And top esports are like, well, if we can't play Samira, you definitely can't play Aphelios. Yeah, and the Syndra is respect banned as well. They think they've realized, you know what? We don't want to deal with this. This was way too good. Syndra specifically. I'd be curious now to see, though, if we start to see the high priority on Zoe come in now for top esports. Uh, that has been the, the go to four nights nice when this Syndra is taken off the board and we saw it a hell of a lot last year Zoe was the second most played champion for him and we're going to see it again this year I imagine as he's already one of his higher played champions as well so I think this hover is a little tip of the hat towards Jackie Love from Colt here because the Draven is a Jackie Love special I've got a feeling that they're just going to lock in Kai'Sa after hovering this for hours and then over <laughs> on the other side we're going to see Jackie Love playing Zaya I think that is the way that this inevitably will go now as that does seem to be the way that the meta has developed down on that bottom side of the map um wouldn't be surprised to see i mean sorry dagda i'm taking your job give me a prediction <laughs> i know it's all good it's all good you got the zai i mean you were doing such a good job i didn't want to interrupt you you know you've basically just I've nailed everything it. so far i know it shows it shows <laughs> However, look, uh, whoa, okay, I wasn't expecting the quick lock-in of the, the, the Gragas. Now, again, we talked about, hey, you know, Gragas coming into this is a flex because we just saw Carson play jungle. However, can be played support, can be played for 369 in the top lane. And it does display picks like the Renekton on the opposite side coming in for Coulter, these, these easy, blind, pickable champions. And when we talked about already how how volatile this top lane matchup is going to be and how both 369 and Colt really want that counter pick. It's nice to have that option there on the side of top esports to flex your muscles a bit. So do you see the Leona from Chance as well? Leona is one of the sports that has been exceptionally high priority. Although in the, I feel like we're, we've, we have the luxury here in the LPL of being on seven days a week. So we see the meta shift like every single day we get to see the differences and like yesterday we didn't really see as much leona we didn't see it last game at all so we, we are seeing things change up slightly but uh, it is going to be alistair leona back to that bot lane uh, matchup that we've seen quite a few times at this point and now we have ap junglers locked in on both sides as well we have both solo laners remaining and we talked about earlier the top side is where these counter picks often go for these players Exactly, and I expect that we're going to see probably a little bit more attention from top esports towards the top side of the map. You can start to get these more favorable matchups. As we talked about, you can just put Gragas there for 369 if you really want. We've seen it quite a lot in both Europe, in North America. Orn taken off the board um, means that potentially we're actually looking at uh, Renekton top, maybe, but I'm curious to see if that's what they decide to go with and then flex that Gragas towards jungle or towards that bot side. So Top Esports looking to ban out top laners by the looks of things, whereas LGD with the Lucian ban, it could theoretically be either lane. So maybe just banning out blind pickable champions right here that that can continue to match the flex theme that we've got yeah, with this Gragas. Okay, it's that's a red. That's a redacted ban right there. Okay, yeah. cool. So we know at least then that Karst is more than light. Well, is going to be taking this Gragas in towards the jungle. Um, it does mean when we look at that bottom side of the map for the Desire Alistair that chances are hang on and i was gonna say that that could have been like a hey you need to ban renekton so we can pick nar but i guess you can pick nar anyway even if renekton yeah. is available yeah true either way we know it's going to be a favorable matchup for 369 and um, super strong to get that top lane pick for themselves i'm not sure really what you can go here for the counter pick i mean we've seen maybe jace come in as the 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 main answer and cult has played right. that before Yasuo well, was the classic Nar answer. I'm just going to throw it out there that that is a thing that existed at one well, point in League of Legends. It looks like what they're uh, going to do is just go today. towards the Camille. So Camille basically does the same. You can close that gap, make it a little bit difficult for an R to, to get away. But certainly now that you've got this pairing of, hey, we've got the Camille plus the Galio, you're playing very heavily towards that top side, locked him down with the Hextech ultimatum, get the Galio to follow up with the heroic entrance and just put 369 in the dirt. So this is definitely LGD looking to utilize that in the at the level six point in time. But we'll have to see if they can get towards that stage because honestly, when I look at Koi on this Lilia, not going to have as big of an impact, especially against something like a Gragas. So Karsa has his pick of the litter essentially here as to what lane he would like to play around and try to get some early advantages, maybe for 369. So he's set up nice and easy when we get to that level six point. And I feel like the 
the composition that LGD have managed to grab for themselves is actually a very high value composition when you think about what's been strong over the last few weeks. When you think about week one and the start of week two, the Camille was like first pick, first bat. The fact that that went all the way to the end of the draft with a bunch of top lane bans in play as well shows how quickly the meta develops here in the LPL. And it's also interesting to see like new things pop up like the rise the rise here coming in for night which we basically hadn't seen at all in pre-season but now it started to rise up a little bit in competitive and it tends to it's slot into this kind of one three one style where you send it off in the side lane and especially when you're looking at the likes of the camille and the galio on the opposite side i like that you've opted in towards an answer for both those side lanes in both the nar and the rise here it does mean though as this game starts to go on a little bit later though i still give the advantage over towards this uh this top or the lgd side because you've got just easier ways of joining in from the split push like with the the galio ult it's got a little bit more range than say the likes of the rise realm warp and as well camille will win out both against the rise and the nar come the late stages in that split push so certainly lgd have got a nice little setup for themselves can still team fight very effectively as well if you're going for a more uh, tank oriented build with the camille and that divine sunder so i like what lgd have here and the answers that they propose to top esports see if the answers are going to be good enough because this is a, a galio in the mid lane which we i will say have seen less of a lot of the galios this year have been down in that support role instead of the mid lane so uniboy you know this is one of the picks that you expect Uniboy to, to play well on when we think back to his world's performance. Stuff like the set as well were also champions that he really, really thrived on. So this is very much within his wheelhouse. And you can kind of set up Quay to be more of the carry around the midsection of the map as Chance is going to face check on in here. They want to get some vision for themselves. Him and Kramer stepping forwards. And we'll just ward over towards the blue buff and back away. I want to go back to your Uniboy point, though, because definitely this is a champion that is 100% in his wheelhouse. He's played a lot of the set, the, the Galio as well. We even saw come out at Worlds. But the big thing here is actually running the Predator in this mid lane as well. It means that he's very much looking to have an influence in the early game of these side lanes, try and run people down with the Predator and that taunt, and maybe set up for Koi in these early aggressive um, mid lane plays. However knight is on this rise and rise does very well against galio in his ability to shove the wave we saw it against the twisted fate the other day where you just don't get the opportunity to roam because your waves cleared out before you even get a chance what's happening <laughs> they're just chasing each other up and down the lane this is a low health top lane right here and that means it's a volatile top lane we could have a kill coming through both junglers are pathing in that direction oh, he's yeah, moving to the mid lane though actually yeah this is Oh. Something that Koi has done before, where he on these pushing matchups, he'll move across the opponent's side and try to commit on towards these Raptors, but he's actually too late. Karis has already started these up, Ooh, but it means they get to play Knight here. Quay comes in and gets the slam as well. Huge damage on Knight. He just has to back away, and now Karsa is alone on the chickens. He's not going to be able to do much here. Has the smite available. Does not have a ward in, and it means Quay can grab this chicken for himself and back away. Nicely done by the 2v2. And this is actually something that they did against EDG as well, which is why I like I was talking about these really cool, unique pathings that Koi does in the early stages to get these leads. If he's got a pushy mid laner, like you've got in the Galio here in the mid lane, he'll just run through mid, help you push in those last few creeps, you're not really losing it much as the mid laner, and get on towards the Raptors and set the enemy jungler behind. Oh, Knight flashing forwards, gets the root, looks for the damage, doesn't quite have enough. One more Q would do the trick, but an E is going to have to suffice Knight with the solo kill in the mid lane. Beautifully done from Knight, just realizing exactly how much damage he can, and Uni Boy overstepping, not realizing how much damage could be turned around there by Knight. And now again, we said, hey, look, as you start to get towards this tier, you start to build up a bunch of this mana as Knight, it becomes very easy for you to control this mid lane matchup. You've just given a bunch of gold in towards Knight's favor, which makes it even more difficult now for Uniboy to have this ultimate impact when he hits that level six. <laughs> Uniboy with the question mark emote as uh, he knows, he knows he messed up. He's got his boots now as well as that dark seal. So we'll be able to use the predator to try and influence the map. Casa is going to go for this bottom skull. It's going to be quite on the top side. And let's bear in mind, 369 is low on HP. Colt has plenty of ways to force that fight if Quay wants to try and make a gank happen. And it looks like that is going to be the call here as he charges straight in flash for the stun from Colt. 
And I think 369 realizes there's no way out of this one. He's not even going to try and flash Dark Harvest acquired and a kill with the leg sweep from Cole. And I like that they gift that over towards Cult. I was kind of saying, Cult, back off, back off. You want this Camille up and running because she's going to be the main source of that split push pressure. Now that you're starting to get this uh, this Camille rolling, she can go towards the Triforce if she wants to go for that full split push orientation, which I actually wouldn't mind in this situation. But we have seen when paired with a Galio, they go Divine Sunder and Sterex. Here we go. Bites. They want to answer on the bot side, though. Top Esports diving, and goodbye, Kramer. Welcome back to the LPL, mate. I hope you enjoy your stay. Chance is going to just about survive for now, but Casa, I don't Mercy. think Mercy. it's going to allow that to happen any longer. Oh, Jackie Love has to flash away for the tower shot, but you know what? We take those. Uh, are you getting a bit of deja vu, Munch? I'm feeling a little bit of deja vu. I mean, two early kills going over towards Jackie Love. Uh, starting yeah, to get a little bit worried. Pass on side. the signature Gragas as well. It's feeling, uh, feeling very similar once again. Beautiful dive, though, from Top Esports. This is the kind of coordination that we were missing in the first two weeks. And it's also interesting to see that now with Zhou in this bottom lane as well versus Yuanjia, that it's more the aggressive plays that are coming in this bottom side rather than the, okay, we're trying to shore up our weakness in this bottom side. It's an advantage that we're actually trying to snowball out of control. And I think that's the big thing for top esports now is that they, with Zhou coming in and being that more aggressive support, being that engaged tool, they've got a bottom lane now that has a strong laning phase, transitions into a strong team fight, and just makes top esports as a whole much more powerful. It's feeling pretty great for top esports, I'm not going to lie. I will say, let's just temper ourselves a little bit here. This is against LGD, who have not been looking fantastic this season so far. And they do have this kind of rookie squad. As the TP comes on in and the rookie squad uh, might just get taken out here. Jo is pretty much invincible already because he is that Alistair. And uh, nice easy kill. Bear in mind as well, that wave is pushing out. This is could even get frozen against Kramer. That would be brutal. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Um, you still have another minute until this Rift Tower comes up. So freeze the wave, then get control where you get the slow push out, Look transition over towards that Rift Herald. Casa's like, okay, which one lane isn't winning yet? I'll go gank for it. Cult's gonna go down here to the wall. Oh no, one more auto. 369 survives. Jumps on top of Uniboy, who's trying to escape. One HP remaining. And Casa chucks out the oh. barrel. Nice little sidestep. Uniboy gets away with it. And I'm glad at least that LGD were able to turn that back around because that was very close to being just top esports answering across the map, which is disastrous if you're on LGD side. But however, no, they're not going to go. So I like the way top esports found that very brief window of opportunity though to make that play on the bottom side this was that early play where knight got the kill got a little bit more cs coming back to bite lgd oh top one casa's predator it around and uh uniboy's found him you don't get to just recall that greedy uniboy charges up to the top side of the map and gets himself a bit of revenge and now 369 wants to chase him but it's not happening uniboy that was very cheeky very well played. And this is what I wanted to see from Uniboy. I want that confidence to come back that we saw in the LMS. Like, when he was over there, like, they finished fourth in playoffs with AHQ. We saw how good he was when he subbed in to, uh, onto um, PSG and Worlds. Like, this guy has so much to offer. However, bot lane. Jakulov has that Featherstorm available. Will use it immediately. Has a root for Quay, but Joel goes down. It's support for support, which 2v3... Tess are going to be happy with that one because Jackie Love keeps his bounty. Yeah, just about before kills for Jackie Love. This Zai is going to be huge. She's going to be able to hit oh that three God. out of spikes on him quick, but top. Dagda, it never ends here. It never ends. Colt will be able to get his hook shot, though. Jumps over the wall. I thought that was going to be interrupted for, by Carsa. I thought that was a guaranteed kill. But these are kind of wins for LGD in the cross map plays because you are getting the shove and bot you're at least buying a little bit more breathing space for kramer get maybe some of these terror plates although not quite able to pick one up for themselves there and Colts is absorbing this pressure but he's getting out he's already been accelerated with the kills as well so losing a bit of cs is not going to set him drastically behind but uh, the scary thing is top esports realize they need to shove it <laughs> chance and uniboy had the audacity to try and clear the minion wave there and top esports were like whoa <laughs> This is our mid lane. You don't get to clear minions and immediately start the fight. 
Yeah, I mean, look, they're just looking to try and get anything rolling here, but it's a battle across the board for lane advantages. So, as we're already saying, Greg is playing towards top. Top Esports realizing they need to shut down Colt to start and get a bit out of control. They already have Jackie Love and Bot, and Chance wants to shut him down. Yeah, he does have to use the cleanse. Has flash available, but Joe's coming in, and I think they might just fight this one instead. Root onto Kramer. One or two more autos would finish off the trick. He doesn't have any summoners available. He's knocked up, and Joe's just going to finish the kill himself. He doesn't need an AD carry. In fact, oh, donates it with the Q. That is beautiful to see. Now, Chance trying to escape, but Cast is not going to let him. Explosive cast is Quay knocked back into the ray. Cast against the other one. They finish off everybody. God damn, Carson, take a bow. That was beautiful. Coming in over the wall, that was a blind cask to hit on towards Koi to send him into the lovingly waiting arms of Zhuo and top esports are able to pick up everybody. But this is just the beauty of Carson. The control that he exerts, his ability to track the enemy jungler, to set up and counteract these plays, and it nets the kills on bot side. Five kills now for Jackie Love. Gale Force already completed let alone how quickly he's going to be able to pick up the likes of this Essence Reaver and Infinity Edge. Jackie Love is going to be massive, and Jackie Love can take over this game. There is no is going to be. He is massive. Jackie Love is yeah. monstrous with his five kills. Just look how he plays this so confidently. Still has Flash this entire time. Just knows he doesn't need it. Yeah, knows that he's got the help coming. Knows that once he's got the cleanse, he can at least create enough distance that Kramer can't really get the damage that he wants. And from that point forward, well, it's top esports. But watch this. Carson, this is blind. Just beautifully predicting where they're going to be. And you can even see the step back tries to come through from LGD. But Carson's just got a sixth sense, man. He knows where you are. I don't know if we're allowed to call them blind casks anymore, Doctor, or if that's against uh, Twitch TOS these days. True. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Bit of a I don't know what I'd call joke, them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving swiftly on before I get myself fired. Um, LGD now going to be trying to grab themselves the Rift Herald. It's Jackie Love in the meantime is just going to trade it for plates. He's already got the Gale Force. Like the, the amount of damage that Jackie Love is going to be doing in these skirmishes is absolutely oh. insane. There is no universe where that 2v2 can happen. And Carson now can contest the Herald. Trying to find okay. this. Oh, Cask used immediately. Quay going to be knocked against the wall. Will walk away with his life. The Herald resets, which is a little unfortunate for top esports. It resets, but they got the victory. I mean, Quay's taken way too low. Colt has no mana. They're all just forced to back away. So they do get the objective while keeping Jackie Love and Joe on this bottom lane. Because, I, I mean, I just want to draw the parallel here. You're 30 CS behind is Kramer. You're three terror plates behind. And you're four kills behind. Like... This Kaisa is going to get to Gale Force at the time that Jackie Love is probably two and a half. Items. Oh my god. I don't even have time to cast this. The speed at which Kramer is <laughs> eviscerated. You said three tower plates. I think we're going to turn that into more because Quay, he wants to try contest this, but Joel's tanky. Doesn't have his ult available, so the dive might be a little bit dicey if they try and go for anything there. Jackie Love will get tagged by a swirl seed, but he's not afraid of no slumber. You can't he's do anything. He's not afraid of no sleep. You can't do anything. If you try and engage on that, it's cool. I still got Featherstorm. I'm still full health. I still have cleanse. I still have flash. It's just you sitting there and just Jackie Love taking your hands and going, stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Why are you still in my lane? This is my domain. Oh, goodness. This is, uh, this is brutal. There's another tower plate for Jackie Love as if he needed more gold at this point in the game. Four and a half thousand gold lead. And we we talked about Jackie Love's stats in game number one, Dagda. We talked about the fact that the gold difference at 15 minutes is almost always 60% of that goes in the pocket of Jackie Love. Well, this game is no exception to the rule either because you know that a massive portion of that gold... I mean, his bounty is like a quarter of the gold difference at this point. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit silly. But the big thing here is, as a lot, you've, all, you've got Jackie Love, who's always performing. The other top performer on this team is Knight. And while we've had all action top, all action boss, Knight has actually been quietly just picking up the CS lead. He's gotten two kills for himself. The Realm Warps have been getting a lot of gold and plays coming through for top esports. But also, he's picked up four turret plates in this mid lane because there's nothing Uni Boy can do. Now, making a play on the bottom side. Oh no, Kramer. Oh no. 
He does have both summoners available. Knight going to be slowed but not stunned here as the CC chain comes in from Chance. That was very nicely played. On to Tro they go. They might just trade supports here. Explosive casketing goes Castor under the tower. And Kramer, you don't have anyone to protect you anymore. Jackie Love slides in and grabs himself that kill. He even uses the feather stall to survive the turret shot. Now the answer on the top side is LGD try and dive onto 369. Going to put him to sleep. Can they finish him off? Stun underneath the tower. The answer is no. It's a one for one. 369 is too damn good. 369 played that so well, but Koi was not the one supposed to take that much aggro. It should have been juggled a little bit better, so then Koi isn't able to just get nard into the wall. And it's a disaster for LGD. They lose the play on top. You've lost your bot lane tower. There's a dragon in 30 seconds that top esports are going to get as well. And there is seven kills on towards Jackie Love. Like, there is nothing. Like, look at the items. There's full mythics across the board on top esports. Whereas when you look at LGD, they're still struggling to complete one. Just look, the tower plate difference alone is absurd at this stage in the game. 1,300 gold almost in favor of top esports. And let's just quickly go back to what we said right at the start of the day about how this LGD squad wants to play. They want to avoid the bot lane 2v2s. They want to play through Cult, through Quay, through Uniboy. They want to play on the top half of the map. But they don't get to. When top esports are putting this much pressure in the 2v2 and with Karsik going down to this bottom side so much, LGD never get a chance to play. They want to play the way that they want. And all that pressure is now on Colt. Like, Colt is the only shining light here. Two kills, Triforce now completed, but it's so easy for top esports to make plays like this. However, nice job getting away, but Colt is now forced to overextend. He has to draw pressure topside to buy time for LGD, to give them some laps of, well, anything. We do have an engage here. His chance is trying to back away. He's pretty tanky though, and actually has a stopwatch. Jackie Love has to Gale Force away from the players. Duo is the first casualty. On towards Castle they go, and LGD have found themselves a turnaround. Gonna go for the sleep. On towards. Oh, it's gonna stop the realm warp. That is beautiful. The CC cancels Knight's ultimate. And now Jackie Love getting chased down. Colt wants a little bit of revenge, and he wants himself a 1k bounty. And three kills over towards Cult. The triple kill. The 1k bounty. We just said the shining light. That glimmer of hope. So slight in that top lane for LGD. is suddenly like a beacon for Gondor. As he's just picked up everything in that top lane. You can now back away as this uh, Camille. You can get that Ravenous Hydra. You can get that Stairs Gage. And Death's Dance. Like you can. You're, the world's your oyster, oyster here. Now. Because he's gone towards Triforce, he's got that Ravenous Hydra. I'd personally go towards Death Stance, give you a little bit more survivability in the 1v1, which is clearly where Colt's head is at. Joe trying to start a fight onto Uniboy here. <laughs> Uniboy's feeling it a little bit. He's feeling like that maybe back in the game with the emotes coming on out. And you know what? If the beacons are lit, Dagda, then Colt is the one to answer. Gondor shall not be alone this day. But... What is, uh, what is Gondor full of? Knights. And Knight is scaling up pretty nicely himself as well. Has the Ludens already. Heading towards the Zonyas as a second item. His tier nearly stacked. Let's bear in mind that that Rise ain't going to get any weaker this game. And I'm surprised to see Top Esports go in here. But I'm not surprised to see Shou starting off. Because Shou only has one mode and it's go in. And it's been the biggest criticism we've had of him every single time in these series. He goes way too far forward. The rest of Top Esports aren't in a position. Like Jackie Love has gotten, I think, maybe a Q and an auto attack off in this fight. When you've got so much of your gold invested on both the Rise and certainly this Kai'Sa, you need them to be in a dominant position before you go for these engages. But Joe jumps the gun, ends up giving a lot of control back over towards LGD. Now, still 4,000 gold lead, still heavily in favor of top esports, but certainly having Camille now with the ability to play through this side lane is going to be amazing for LGD. Yeah, we hilariously had uh, the replay of what was going on at that blue portion of the jungle there. And then in the meantime, we had the live feed of what was going on in the exact same part of the jungle where Top Esports got a pick on Quay. It was kind of like, a, here's what it looks like when it goes wrong for Top. Here's what it looks like when it goes right for Top. These are the two different ways that this play could go. And it does open up this Rift Arrow for Top Esports now. Yeah, and this is going to make it a lot more difficult again for Cult to play these side lanes. Because you can pop this down in mid, 
get this last uh, inner turret makes it easier to start to draw your vision in towards the opponent's side and then as cult you've got to really overextend if you want to put any sort of pressure on towards top esports and this is where cult is going to struggle you've got to put yourself if you're hoping to carry this game into situations where you can get caught out just because otherwise you're going to just sit underneath the tower you're going to slowly bleed out in the rest of the map and that's where you can see cool and cult here are pretty far forward but they might get the pick Good stun onto Colt there, and buffered the Q as well. 369 basically didn't get CC'd there. With the way that he buffered his abilities, he might as well have not ever been asleep. Beautifully done from him. And in the meantime, he had some support from Dro and the rest of the gang to be able to protect him down on the bottom side of the map. And as to be said, with the amount of pressure that 369 has had on him this game, the fact that he's managed to find himself a CS lead is honestly so impressive. Very much. I mean, it's just been the the prowess of 369 for such a large portion of, I mean, the entire time he's been in LPL. He's just been such good, or such a good lane bully. And we talked about how much Knight and Carsa have tailored towards him. But we haven't been seeing that as much this game. It has been very bot focused for top esports. And I think that's one of the avenues that having Joao come into this roster does open up is the ability to have these more engaged, aggressive supports, get that bullying going, and then play down towards Jackie Love rather than just relying on, hey, we got to play through 369 in this top lane. We need to get him ahead. So when we hit these team fights, he can be our big engage tool and beefcake to set up our fights. And while we've got a, a moment of reprieve here, because the dragon's up, uh, top esports have control of the area. I realistically don't think LGD can contest this one at all. Um, so they're just going to try and pressure elsewhere on the map. While I have this second to talk, I want to mention the fact that Juo looks fantastic today. When the rest of the team from top esports can also be on these champions that can be aggressive 24 7, you can't be too aggressive. You can't be too aggressive when all you well, want to be is did aggressive. Just go too aggressive. <laughs> I was kind of, Listen. you know. <laughs> There's no such thing as too aggressive when the scoreline looks like this. We're doing results-based <laughs> analysis here on the LPL. Dagda, I don't care oh, about what's sorry, happening sorry. on the screen. I, I care haven't about read the my emails for a little while. I didn't see the memo. <laughs> my bad. I'm real sorry. But top, they're but, still going aggressive. Look, they're starting Baron. They're going straight towards Baron. Juo has looked pretty great today comparatively to what we've seen. Uniboy now wants to answer. Chance coming in from the side as well. 2000. It's already gone. Smite comes out from Casa, and now on top of that, as a cherry on the cake, they find themselves a pick onto Chance. Uniboy is totally alone. Should be finished off fairly simply by Jackie Love here, as the rest of the squad does get collapsed on. Uniboy has survived in the meantime. Knock up onto Kramer, who's forced out of the fight. Flashes away. Jackie Love trying to chase down this kill as Quay dashes out towards the top side of this one. Knight teleports in, but he's a little too late to the party. And now Top Esports can just run it up mid. I mean, this game is over. They have Baron, you've got Dragon, that's our out their soul, but pick on to Koi oh, just to insult oh, injury. <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot that you could do about that one. The belly is too damn strong. Yeah, I mean, look, what do you do? Baron for top esports, they're pushing in every, all your towers. You've got a outer turret that remains on the bot side of the map. Dragon, soul for top esports is spawning in three minutes. Top esports just shove in all your waves, keep you underneath your towers, and then they just skedaddle back over to pick up that dragon as it spawns. There's just little that you can do here as LGD side. And the biggest issue here for this fight was just LGD were all over the place. They, they were already massively far behind, but when Quay isn't in a position to, to join in this fight, Kramer isn't getting anything done. You don't have that, that combo that we set up already between Colt and Uniboy to start off the fight. It's just top esports running around like kids in a sweet shop, picking up whatever the hell they want and put it in their mouth before the shopkeeper catches them. I swear, it went. Oh, I don't have time to talk. I don't have time for anecdotes. 369. I mean, I guess I do, because there's nothing to commentate there. He's already gone. The rest <laughs> of the squad's moving over, though. Top esports, they don't want to let someone go down without that casualty being answered. These are brothers in arms, and they certainly won't let their comrades fall down towards this bottom side. They do have three caster minions to work with if they want to try and siege this tower. But realistically, the wave clear ain't exactly fantastic on the side of LGD. And when Karsa can threaten the dive like that, gives an opportunity for Jackie Love to start hammering away on this tower. Looks like this tier two might go down and Jackie Love even happy to tank a couple of tower shots for the effort right here. Mid lane does go down to minions. 
which is uh, the second tower now for LGD. But top esports, I don't think, are letting up anytime soon. The siege continues here in the bottom side. Yeah, you, Kramer's on. Kramer's in top side. Like they're going to lose their neighbor terror. I like. What? 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 Armor like... Kramer, tending to his crop in the top lane Through here. Through the crops. <laughs> And I think that this is LGD. This is not like a Kramer mistake. This is LGD making the call that yeah. we cannot defend this inhibitor. Let's just try and get something elsewhere. But it's their best. Oh, they pulled the cannon. This. They that pulled the beautiful. cannon to the mid lane. Oh this God. is so 5 head from top esports. You give them anything and they will take everything. They turn a single inhib push that LGD gave them into two. Now a fight comes in, but Carsa is tanking everyone up pretty handily right here. Damage coming out from Knight as well as they answer this one. They don't quite get the mid inhib, but now Colt stunned against the wall as 369 jumps away towards the rest of his squad. He's going to turn into Mininar, but Colt has to flash away from the play. The Featherstorm aggressively, but the Feathers don't quite pull back in time. It turns out he's not ticklish. Life is pain, Munch. Watching this from LGD, like you have a guaranteed team fight as LGD. You all Hextech ultimatum in towards the Galio ult, and you to four versus five without uh -oh. the tank. No time to explain because oh. the triple <laughs> knockup from Dwo knocked into the knockup, the cask into Alistair. That is what I am talking about. That is what a team fight combo looks like right there, Dagda. That's some synergy and a half between Carsa and Dwo, but I'm still baffled by LGD. Like, you have a four versus five and a three, six, nine, guaranteed engage, and you just let your base die. Now Colt's dying. Everyone's dying. It's dead. Yeah, it's over. this is this is falling apart for LGD. And Colt in absolute shambles. He's five, two, and three. He had magnificent CS for most of the game, but there's just nothing you can do when the rest of the map has fallen apart around your ears like this. Top esports are well and truly back in form. Is this the toughest opponent in the league? No. But do they look damn good when they're taking this win? You're damn right they do. Padding their stats a little bit as they grab a couple more kills on the Phantom 369 with another questionable ult. But that's okay as the Nexus will fall. And Top Esports take a, a well-earned victory lap on this one. Jackie Love with his 11th kill. And let's... Oh, in fact, Kramer manages to dodge it as Top Esports take the 2-0. So, Jackie Love didn't die today, and he got 20 kills. No, he so didn't. He died one time. Did he? Did he die once? Oh, cool. That means that I could be actually getting uh, him Colt chased rather him than down just on the top side. this infinity thing. Cool. True, true. So, he's he's got a, a 20, at least, added to his KDA off of just kills, let alone all the assists. So, pretty nice day for the stat book on Jackie Love's side. But it was already a pretty nice stat book for Jackie Love when he's got two-thirds of the gold lead that top esports have at 15. What a performance yeah. from top, though. You can see mechanics absolutely on point. The synergy really starting to come together. And this early game from Carsa on this Gragas, amazing. Every single time he's brought this pick out, he's just been 